Yeah, I went a little bit crazy for this episode. Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. That's right, for your guys' viewing pleasure, I bought every single color variation on the new Custom Color 5060 standards that were announced for August 29th of 2023, when they introduced 12 new colors for both the 50s and 60s standards, for a total of 24 different options. Now, quick little FAQ before we start today's ultra unboxing episode. Why on earth did I do this? Is it some sort of a flex? No, I spent $69,600 to basically create a buying and or curiosity game guide for people so they could see all the colors in one place because sometimes certain colors look better in person than they do stock photos and you wouldn't know it unless you could see it at a store. And let's be realistic, most stores aren't going to have one of every single color for you to browse. And ultimately, this video is for historic preservation, very similar to when I did the prototype versions of the initial original collection. These colors will not always be in stock and to be able to look back and see them all together I think will be cool. Also, buying 24 guitars is a great way to do an anonymous quality control check. And we can also see, like, what the average weight is. And if you're interested in any of these, they will be for sale on my website afterwards as used demo units. Well, now that we got the tedious frequently asked questions and unboxing portions done, let's go ahead and crack into these guitars. So let's go ahead and crack open custom color number one. It's the Inverness Green Les Paul. Okay, that's a lot brighter in person than I was expecting. Stock photos gave it a slight darkness, however it definitely has quite the color shift effect in person. Sometimes it just looks like a straight up green, other times it's like more of like a very light Pelham blue, so that's pretty interesting, but look at how dark this fretboard is. I got lucky on that one. I'm sure we'll see some variations. But all the new solid colored ones have a natural back. This looks a little bit better in person. There's actually kind of a dark smokiness to it that I think works on this example. I'd say that's a pretty solid way to start this one out, but let's check out the 50s neck version now to see how it fares. I think the first thing I noticed right away was the different style of knobs between the 50s and 60s standards. I had never realized that before I saw them side by side. And here we can definitely tell that the fretboards are just going to vary. This one's actually rather light. We'll do a quick little beauty show off. I would say this is going to be pretty standard throughout the run. Your solid colors, they're not going to change that much. It'll be the bursts later on in the episode. Sometimes things like blueberry burst can vary heavily example to example, but we can always check for cool wood grain. But besides our knob differences, you also have different tuners besides our neck profiles. So we got Clusens over here on the 50s neck and Grovers on the 60s. Let's go ahead and check our weights. So the 60s standard is 9 pounds 13 ounces. And our 50s friend, 9 pounds 15. But to follow up Inverness Green, I think it's only natural to take a look at how it compares to the Pelham Blues. We've had the Pelham Blue on the Les Paul Modern for a couple of years now. So let's see what it looks like here. All right, so it definitely looks a little bit, once again, brighter than I was expecting. One thing that's jumping out at me right away is the cream plastic pickguard is a little bit different of a hue than our pickup rings. But once again, it really just kind of depends what angle you view it at as to what hue it is. So I've got a good grasping understanding here, but yeah, that side profile shot of the natural, it's definitely something to get used to. Now, when you buy 24 guitars, the odds of one of these getting broken in transit <laughs> are pretty high that we'll have at least something. So I'm kind of scared opening these at the same time, but hopefully it will be okay. Let's check out the 50s neck. Yep, everything's seeming pretty similar over here. Same slight discolorations between our plastics. But this one's definitely feeling a little bit chunkier, but I'm definitely preferring, for me personally anyways, the 50s neck. It's a little bit more rounded as compared to the 60s. It's definitely not like huge R7 baseball bat by any means, but I would say that they are getting slightly thicker. Because I remember when these first came out, it didn't really feel that much of a difference, but now I am feeling it. But again, let's check out our weights. The 50s neck is 9 pounds 10 ounces. 60s neck is our lightest one yet, 8 pounds 13.3 ounces. So here's your difference between Pelham Blue and the Inverness Green. They're kind of like along the same lines, but obviously one's a little bit more green. Like this one has like some sea foam attributes to it. I think it pulls off the plastic discoloration better because I didn't even notice that at first, but the blue definitely makes it a little bit more obvious. But they're both pretty nice additions, this one being the newest that we've seen for a while. However, the 60s Pelham does have some light finish checking by our nut. Doesn't look like anything nefarious. I also see a few other small QC finished things around the cutaway in our binding. I'm not talking about the thin cutaway in the binding, I'm talking about like the finish that kind of bunched up right before it and a little bit by our neck. 
But now let's check out the next complementary color. This is the Burgundy Mist, which was another color borrowed from the Les Paul Modern series or the old SG Specials. I guess the best thing about this burgundy color on here is we always talked about in the demo shop updates how when they would take a Les Paul Modern and give it a standardized look, how it just looks so completely different. Now we have that as a stock option. Let's see how it fares on a Les Paul Standard. Whoa, holy cow! This is what I was talking about, guys. I would have never have known this was this beautiful. Oh, wow. I like this one a lot. We had just recently reviewed the Rick Beato signature double cut in Sparkling Burgundy, but that one was a satin finish. It's amazing how much different this color <laughs> looks on a gloss finish. Like some angles, it's completely black. Other ones, it's just this nice ruby red. That's a winner in my book. And my friends, not only is the color awesome, I think we won the wood grain lottery on the back of this one too. Very nice chatoyant effect, but what's great is your playing angle of this one has a lot of that as well. And even if you don't see it in the light just right, there's just a lot of cool wood grain on this example. So far, my favorite one. The back of the neck has a slightly more reddish hue to it. I wonder if that's actually contamination of the red burgundy top into the natural finish, but this looks exactly like a custom color R7. I'm digging it. Even this whole case is a little bit darker. I notice some of these are really sticky. Sometimes you have to like yank the case open even when everything's gone. But like this case over here, you can tell there's just a slight color difference. But let's see, love at first sight again. Oh yeah, that one looks good too. The 60s one almost has a very similar phenomenon as far as the wood grain along the edge. However, it doesn't quite dance as much. As far as our top color, definitely does the same stuff but we have just a slightly more streaky fretboard on this one. Once again, though, I'm noticing a lot of trash or something in the finish right here in our cutaway. I suppose if we look on the 50s one, there's a little bit there as well, but it's not anywhere near as noticeable. These are fantastic. Pick one up. That's my suggestion. But oh boy, our 50s one is quite chunky. 10 pounds, 5 ounces. And our 60s at 10 pounds, 6. This one's getting a star from me. Our next ones here might be considered boring by most people when you could choose from such vibrant colors as what we've seen here before, but this is the ebony top. These ones I think are going to play off much better when they have their natural back and sides. This is what I've been talking about, guys, that side profile shot. Black top guitars, especially when they've been aged, just look great. It almost has a slightly purple hue to it, but this is our 50s neck version. We'll just take a quick little swoop to appreciate it for its beauty. Now I am noticing lots of light polishing scratches. I mean, that's kind of to be expected when you choose the pure ebony finish. Those ones hide no sins, that's for sure. I saw some guys saying that they didn't like the natural back on all these. They thought it was a way for Gibson to save money. I mean, maybe it is because they don't have to paint all of it. I mean, they still have to do a clear natural lacquer, so I don't think they're saving that much time. And for me, I think it looks better on certain colors than others, but this is one that I feel excels because it has the natural back and sides. Again, with a little bit of contamination here. Now we'll check our 60s neck one here real quick. Very similar stuff here. I'd say both of the backs on these got some... <laughs> oh, I like that one. Yeah, that's got a lot of movement. I'd suggest picking this one up. And oh my, look at that. There's a little eye over here. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I like having the natural wood grain too, because sometimes you get weird stuff like even if somebody steals your guitar, sands off your serial number, you always know it's yours because there's the doofy little clown eye over here. Or you could say it's like a, a frog egg. This one, I do not see any contamination. The 60s neck definitely gets another star from me. So these are just cool. Not a bad weight either. 9 pounds, 5.2 ounces. But then the 50s is nice and chunky. 10 pounds, 3 ounces. But our next color is a little bit more vibrant and chirpy. We're talking about Cardinal Red. That's right, a 60s custom color. Whoa! Yeah, that is really bright ketchup in your face. <laughs> I'm not personally a big fan of it, but I could see how other people might be. This one's sitting in the case kind of weird. I hope it's okay. Huh, that's weird. Where the headstock meets into the body, it's almost like it didn't get sanded over as flush. Or maybe it's just because I just happened to pick it up that way and felt it. Obviously, when you feel it on the neck, it's completely normal. But I wonder if this one just didn't get quite sanded down as much. Because it's rather abrupt. But anyways, here's what this one's looking like. It is really bright and in your face. Like if you want a rockabilly style Les Paul, I think this would actually work pretty well. It almost has more of like an orange color vibe in person. But then with having the natural back and sides, this is going to vary example to example. So this body is actually pretty light, but then our neck is kind of dark. 
So this one's just got all kinds of different colors going on. Well, let's see how our 50s one looks. Personally, I would say this one's a little bit less jarring. It's got a slightly redder hue to it, so maybe even the solid colors do vary, but it might also just be not having the reflector knobs. But this one, the back is a little bit darker, but still has that whole body wood is a little bit lighter than the neck multicoloration going on here. You tell me, do you see a color difference between these? I think it really just does come down to the reflector knobs, kind of making this one look very slightly brighter. The 50s weighs 9 pounds, 6.3 ounces, and the 60s just under 9 pounds, 15. I don't know about you guys, but I'm really excited for this one. The inverse of black, we got the white tops. I don't believe it's a sparkle metallic white, even though that would have been really cool. Maybe they can do that another time. But here is pure white. Oh, okay. In person, it's different than I was expecting. It's got more of like a yellowish white to it, and it could just be that the plastics play off it in a strange way. You can see the binding has a color, the finish has a color, the poker chip has a color. I feel like this one would probably do better with like pure white plastics. And again, keep in mind, these are just my first impressions. Sometimes it takes a while to warm up to a guitar. The last time that I can remember that we had a white Les Paul standard like this was actually in the 80s. They had a few limited edition ones, but those were all white. They did not have the natural back and sides. So as far as finding a white top Les Paul, basically custom color R7s like everything else we've been talking about today. So I really think this is just like a, a plastics change away from looking a little bit more crisp white if that's what you were expecting. But to be fair, this finish is called classic white, not in your face white. <laughs> but let's see how our 50s one fared. So this one, again, it's like just the changing of our knobs really does transform the effect. But pretty much all the same stuff I had already said. See, how's our wood grain? It's pretty decent. But I like this neck. It's almost burly, but it's like not actually figured like that. It just has a lot of wood grain going on for it. Our cutaway is actually done very well on this example, but here you can really tell that difference between the dark mahogany and the light mahogany. Nice even fretboards. It seems a lot of them are pretty even. So here's these two together. Let's check their weights. Nine pounds, nine ounces for 50. And ooh, pretty nice. Eight pounds, 14 ounces. Before I put these away, I do want to say this color does grow on you. I know it's only been a couple of minutes, but now that I know what to expect, I think a lot of these custom colors will look cool once players have kind of like worn through some of the finish in certain areas. But that is going to wrap it up for the plain tops. That's all the solid colors. So we got the classic white, the Inverness green, the burgundy mist metallic, your ebony, and the cardinal red. Without a doubt, burgundy is the way to go, in my opinion. That is a slick finish. But I was really happy to find that eye formation on that 60s ebony. And that means it's time to get to the real fun, the flame tops. I have no idea what each of these look like due to the fact that I had to order one of each. I didn't really get to be picky. But let's go ahead and start with the one that I thought was going to be my 100% favorite, the ocean blue. I'm either going to be ecstatic or uh, I'm going to be disappointed. <laughs> you just never know with flame tops. This one is looking pretty decent. This is our 60s neck ocean blue. That is just a very nicely even uniformed flame top. There's definitely some hot spots like this one. And there's other spots that are a little bit more dead. But this is one that you can truly appreciate in person. And honestly, I think it looks better like hanging up on a wall. <laughs> it's a very good angle for that. But it's got that really nice dark fretboard here. And thankfully, no whammies back here. And hey, would you look at that? The color of the mahogany matches a little bit better on this example. And we've got a light dancing effect. But now number two, 50s. Ugh. Now, I'm not complaining. It's still a flame top, but it's not necessarily uniform. You've got an interesting patch of flame right here that gets a little bit darker depending on the angle. And yeah, we've got flame all over, just not quite as impressive as that other one in my opinion. However, the back kind of makes up for it. It's got some additional flameage for us. I think this would look really cool with like a green back. But whoa, what's going on with the neck on this one? It looks like they had like a wood filler or a stain that just didn't catch in this area. It very well might just be the different color in the mahogany. Our tuner tips are also extra orange. That's the great thing about flame tops though. Everyone has their own opinion on them. Some people might like an identifying feature like that. Personally, this one's my favorite of the two. And it weighs nine pounds, 11 ounces. But hey, there you go. That one's not as bad, eight pounds, 15. So sadly, there we go. I thought that was going to be my favorite hue out of everything. And honestly, 
I was a little underwhelmed in person. But this next one has me curious. They called it Cherry. Is this going to just look like an SG's finish on a Les Paul? Let's take a look-see here. Yeah, that's exactly what that is. Now, if you're wondering why it doesn't quite appear as dark as an SG, it's because this is a maple top. The maple wood is a little bit lighter in color than the mahogany, but it has a very similar stain. In fact, that would have been really cool had this been like the one that happens to get a mahogany top. That could have gave it its own claim to fame, but this actually does have its own special feature. The back is also cherry, so kind of like some of the other original collection guitars. So if you don't like the whole natural back phenomenon, but you still want one of the new ones, this is the one choice you have pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> but for being a flame top, I'm kind of weak. It is there, but at least we have this interesting eye formation. Let's see how our luck in the wood grain lottery is for 50s. Yeah, that's a little bit better. Yeah, this one. I like it a lot better. It really just kind of depends on what top you get with these. That last one didn't have much flame, so you didn't get much of the dark look of it. But this one, depending on what angle you view it at, you know, it gets lighter and darker due to the figuring within the wood. This gives me George Harrison Lucy vibes. But again, we've got the red back. However, I really think this would have looked good had it had the natural. And my guess to why we don't have it is maybe the red would bleed into it too much. And they just didn't want to deal with those shenanigans. Speaking of bleeding, some finish like bled right in between our nut and binding. Not too big of a deal. In general, this one just looks a little bit darker. And again, that's why I did this experiment. You just never know how these things will look in person, and you can't just judge it by one. But we've got 9 pounds, 7.6 ounces for our 50s, and 60s at 9 pounds, 10.7. But now let's give the amber finish a try. I'm kind of expecting an AFD-like vibe, but maybe it'll be completely different. No, that, that's pretty accurate. It looks very similar to the Appetite for Destruction Les Pauls from the Slash original collection. So if you don't necessarily care for the pickups that they come with, you could potentially get one of these if you don't mind the pick guard. But yeah, I like that top. It's got nice ringiness and some good flame figuring. Now finding our orangish plastics work incredibly well with this color scheme. It doesn't necessarily feel new though, uh, until you flip it over to the back. This is one where I don't know if the natural back actually helps this one or not. I guess that would be another difference between the AFD and this. If anything, this gives me more so greeny vibes from the side profile. So if you didn't like that those came in a satin finish, <laughs> you could just get this as a glossy version and upgrade your pickups because they also now sell those pickups separately. But how does our 50s neck friend look? <laughs> yeah, that's a winner, baby. Oh man, this one's definitely within the top guitars today. The color, the flame pattern, it's pretty darn good. And again, I'm really impressed how most of these boards are actually incredibly dark and even. We've only had a few streaky examples, but again, that depends who you are. Some guys like the streaky ones. But again, we've got our kind of paler looking mahoganies back here, but I have no <laughs> complaints on this top. This is kind of what I was hoping that ocean one would have. Kind of has an interesting thing right here on the side. It almost looks like there's a ding or a dent or some light spot, but it's actually a figuring spot within the wood because it really only has a light Chateauian effect to it in the back. In fact, you could say these two mahogany pieces aren't the perfect pairing, and it has that dancing line right there. I'd say these are both pretty handsome Pauls. This one, just a little bit darker in hue, and you can tell the backs are way different in color too. Let's grab our weight. Our 50s is a chunker, 10 pounds, two ounces. 60s, not as bad, nine and a half. I think it's safe to say this one gets a star. But I'm vastly curious about this new hue. They call it fuchsia. So again, kind of going back to the 90s limited colors edition that we had documented in this episode, all the colors. A lot of people called those Barney purple. So let's see, how does this one look in person? Whoa, definitely pink. It's not as vibrant as it's appearing in the camera. It's a little bit more subtle than that. It does have a slight color shift effect to it with your flame pattern but I could see a lot of people liking this. I'm digging it simply because it's something different that we have not seen Gibson do in a long time. I was very happy these new custom color collections that came out because you know, the 50s and 60s standards, they're great guitars, right? But they are just starting to feel a little bit stale. Check out the back on this one, some nice mahogany figuring. In person, just looking at the back, it almost makes you feel dizzy. It's got a very fuzzy effect to it. I like it. The mahogany is really dark on the neck of this one as well. The fuchsia top natural back kind of works. But how is our 60s top fair? 
Ooh, nice. It's got a little bit of a reverse chevron flame. Yeah, this one can dance in the light. I would almost say the hue on this is a little bit darker. And the fuzz from the case being stuck in our saddles works well with the color scheme. So I think why these are looking so refreshing is the fact that you don't notice the plastics not exactly matching as much as some of these other colors because it complements it really well. The back isn't too fascinating though. It's just straight grain. But here they are side by side. You can compare their color as well as our backs. And now our weights. 60s, 9 pounds, 5 ounces. 50s, 9 pounds, 7.2. But let's be extra hopeful here. It's a return of Blueberry Burst, everyone's favorite color. I believe it was 2017-ish when they first launched this one. Everyone lost their minds on the internet. It was one of those rare cases of Gibson actually came up with something that a lot of people enjoyed. I think it's great that it's back after a short hiatus. Top number one. That is very pinstripey. Like if you like pinstriped flame tops, I would say this is the nicest one of those that we've seen. But here's the thing about Blueberry Burst. They vary so much example to example. It's always kind of either a darker purple here or almost a non-existent purple. Like this one's more so just kind of like a peaceful blue. Everything is definitely vibing here. And guess what? Cherry is not the only one that has a colored back. Blueberry gets a blue back. Nice. I like it. They really went all out on these blueberries, and I think they're going to sell a boatload of these because now we don't have to fight the resale market on the existing blueberries because it's back in production, baby. But I'm pretty sure this dealer had like a crazy monster top, so let's hope this 50s is that one that I saw. Come on. No. <laughs> Another kind of reverse chevron pinstripey one. It's all right, I guess. I'm sorry guys, I I'm like losing steam here. It's just sensory overload checking out all these ones, but I will say this one feels incredibly lightweight. So we will have to check the weights here in a second, but yeah, that is actually a pretty nice top, but you can kind of see what I'm talking about, how this one has a little bit more predominant purple. But again, it's a dark blue back, which is good and bad. But remember how we've been seeing these lighter colored backs versus the darker colored necks? You can still tell that on the blue finish. So don't think, yeah, Gibson didn't mix the paint right. It, it's just because of the wood underneath. It's a different hue. It's going to portray differently. Now, I think you can compensate for it. So I guess if you want to give a little bit of flack for that, okay. But I've just kind of come to appreciate it. It gives the guitars a little bit of character. So let me know. What do you think? I mean, just looking at it side by side. You see how this one's so much more purple and this one's not? And it's got like more of a blue, whereas this one's darker. It really depends on a lot of factors for Blueberry Burst. So if you're shopping for one of these, you know, call a bunch of dealers, get photos. They do look way different in person. But our 50s is at 9 pounds, 2.3 ounces. And for some reason, this one feels lighter, but it weighs heavier. 9 pounds, 13.4. I've really come around to that pinstripey one. That looks good. But then there were two. And it is, oh wow, one of these is really heavy. It's the ox blood finish. To tell the truth, I'm a little bit worried about this color. Like, is it going to be so dark you don't even see the flame top? Is it worth buying this? That's why I bought them, to find out. Yeah, it's so dark, it's really not even worth having a flame top on. <laughs> that, yeah, if, if you're looking for traditional ox blood, that is nearly black. Wow. Even in the light, you don't really see through. I mean, you've really got to hold this at an angle and be holding the guitar yourself to even be able to tell it has anything. I'm kind of surprised they just didn't make it a traditional ox blood and like get rid of the ebony, but it's nice to have some additional options. It's not my favorite, but if you're a Jeff Beck fan, this is a great way to get a relatively inexpensive Oxblood because I, I don't think we've ever had Oxblood standards from Gibson USA in a mass production run anyways. This might be a custom color edition set, but it's, you know, they'll produce them until they kind of start to get stale is the vibes I get. But that was our 50s neck and our last one for the day, guitar number 24. The 60s variety. I wish I could say it'll vary example to example, but I mean, this one's pretty much ebony as well. All right, so I'm looking at this here and like, I think I can see a nice flame top underneath it, but you really have to get it at an angle. And to be honest, it's a good thing. I was thinking that they had made it lighter and then technically it's not ox blood, but no, that is not the case at all. 
Again, if you want traditional ox blood finish, this is it. They have delivered exactly upon what they're saying. It's a ultra super dark red color, nearly black. <laughs> but hey, look at this. Our exposed maple top in the cutaway shows us its flame, so that's kind of cool. Yeah, that's what they should do with this color. Give us a natural binding instead of having the plastic one. That would really modernize Gibson to do like the whole faux binding stock from the factory. I would like to see them start to experiment with stuff like that. I mean, you've got the woods anyway, you might as well. And my other suggestion would be Gibson, these little foam blocks. I understand what they're supposed to be for to help keep it in place, but they do not stay in place at all <laughs> during the shipping process. So maybe they should look into something that might stay in place better. Not that the fit of the cases are terrible or anything. Well, here's our two ox brethren together and our backs with a 60s weight of nine and a half pounds and 50s is about the same too, just a hair over that. And just cause I'm not ready to give up yet, let's take a flashlight. Okay, here you can kind of see it. Man, that's unfair. That's such a great top hiding under here. And you just don't really get to see it, but I'm glad I thought to bring out the flashlight. Please Gibson, give us an ox blood burst. Make the edges look like this, but then lighten up the center a little bit. So basically it would look something like this. That would be a killer finish because it would be the best of both worlds between a non-bursted edge and a solid color guitar. Uh huh, our 60s one is even harder to see through, but again, it looks like they're putting all the best tops on these. When you don't have giant bright studio lights shining in your room, you can actually see through to the red finish just a little bit more. So if you have like big fluorescent lights in your house or whatnot, you might not be able to see it like on stage, but it does become a little bit more apparent. Depends where you are. All right, troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed this mass unboxing that I created to help you understand whether you would want to buy one of these things or not. If you're interested in any of these demo models, they will be for sale as used units. They don't have factory warranty. I'm not a Gibson authorized dealer and you can find them exclusively on my website. Ultimately, the sparkling burgundy was my number one favorite. That thing knocked it out of the park. All right, troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed. If you're new to the channel, I do daily uploads of guitar related content, typically centered around Gibsons because that's what I prefer. That doesn't mean we don't do other brands occasionally. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care. If you enjoyed tonight's episode, consider subscribing. I post videos like this every day. And you might even enjoy this next one.